This is Ask Lisa, a podcast to help people understand the psychology of parenting. Psychologist Dr. Lisa Demore, author of two New York Times best-selling parenting books, takes your questions. And I'm co-host Rena Ninen, a journalist and mom of two. Some of what we talk about comes from raising children ourselves. Most of the time, I'll be getting answers to your parenting questions. So send your questions to AskLisa at drlisademore.com. Episode 78, my daughter's nude selfie got out. What do we do now? You know, I'm still struggling with the cell phone issue because fifth grade graduation is coming around the corner and lots of kids end up getting the cell phone. I am not giving in, Lisa. I'm not giving in. Standing firm. Stick to your guns, Rena. Stick to your guns. And, you know, there's options beyond cell phones. There's um, a few different devices that are really good-looking phones that text and do all sorts of things, but they do not get kids onto the Internet. Mm -hmm. So... That's good to know. Um, Apparently, yeah. my son says that makes you a pariah. So very yeah, uncool. No. Um, but <laughs> I'm, I'm standing to it. I, I say, Dr. Lisa tells us not time yet, not time yet. <laughs> so Until um, you can't get together with your friends, well, then we'll have that conversation. That's a great, that's a great point. But, you know, there are things that you just can't control no matter how many conversations you, you have. And we got this note asking for some help here. Dear Dr. Lisa, my daughter texted a naked photo of herself to her boyfriend. He then shared the photo with his guy friends. My daughter is absolutely shattered. We live in a small town with one high school. While she has some supportive friends, the guilt and shame and anxiety of facing other kids feels unbearable. She has since dumped the boyfriend. I still don't think he fully realizes what he has done. I want to help her move past this, but even I feel the rush of these emotions too. How do I help her move on? What should we focus on now? And will this ever go away? Ah, I'm still with that last part. Will this ever go away? Because I can imagine it doesn't feel like it will. Yeah, this is a really tough one, Rena. And it just, oh, it just breaks my heart, right? It's um, such an easy mistake to make, which I know, I know people feel like it's, ah, oh, it's not that easy. Like we tell kids all the time not to do it, but it can happen so impulsively. Oh, yeah. And its ramifications are so huge. Um, and, and so it happens. It happens a lot. What do you think the parent can do here? Well, in some ways, not a lot. And, and I think that's why this is such a tough letter. You know, that the, there's not a huge amount of recourse that the parent has. Um, so I think there's kind of, you know, the helping her own child get through it and, and find a way to live with it. And there may be some steps that could be taken if, you know, it's still being passed around, passed around. You know, there may be some steps. And let's come back to that. But I think a lot of empathy and a lot of love for this kid and just saying, okay, you you messed up. You know, you knew you weren't supposed to do that. But, you know, what's happened has happened. We can't change the past. And let's hope it just sort of quietly goes away on its own. And it might. I mean, Rena, the only thing that gives me strange comfort in this is that it's not that unusual for nudes to exist. You know, mm-hmm. that they're, they're, this is um, – she's not the only kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, there may be a kind of an old news quality to this pretty soon. And, and that would be in many ways the best possible outcome is if everybody gets bored and moves on to the next thing. And that would be what I would hope but can't be guaranteed. And it's that last question that the mom asked, will this ever go away? Because as you're experiencing this, it must feel like an eternity. And it must feel like this is never going to end. It, it must. I mean, it's, it's you know, the nature of being a teenager especially is that the moment you're in feels like it stretches forever. And mm-hmm. so I think um, to the degree that the parent can say, you know what, this is going to be a thing that happened. It will not change. You know, it will not follow you forever. It will you know, quiet down eventually or soon, you know, your job is to kind of hold your head up high and um, try to just march forward and not make a big deal of it, not be reactive to people who are making a big deal. I mean, I think there's not a ton that this young woman can control at this point, but she can control her reaction. Mm -hmm. And I will say, you know, there's this tension around You know, should she be trying to talk about it? Should the girl be trying to talk about it, get people to stop sharing it, see what's going on with the sharing? Mm -hmm. Or should she try to, like, 
see if she goes quiet about it, if the whole thing starts, you know, if it helps the whole thing to go quiet. I mean, there's no clear answer, but I think there could be a cost, especially if it is starting to die down, there could be a cost to um, to continuing to to focus on it um, if, if other people are moving on. She mentions it's a small town. Do you suggest that you go to the school to bring this up? Well, so this is where things get very complicated very fast. Yeah, um, yeah. So there, there is a legal side to this. What? Um, yeah. They're, no, they're this kids. is where things... They're kids. They are kids. So, Rena, this is so messy, and I am not a lawyer, so I'm not saying, you know, this is the legal information people should go with, but here's the reality. Um, every state handles things like this differently. Um, wow. Nude photos that are passed around, generated by and then passed around among adolescents, kids under age 18. And some states have penalties for it. Some states um, wrap it in under child pornography laws. What? Yes. Wait, so and if this, this is, is my really kid delicate. who shared the photos and you come to me talking about it and then you're telling me maybe it could be legal, like, I am going to shut you down. I don't want, like, what? Yeah. No, it's pretty weird. And truly, Rena, it is state by state. And okay. so- you know, parents, if this is something that's happened or happening in your life, you should know how your state handles these. And what's interesting, Rena, is there are states that have been like, it doesn't make sense to pursue legal consequences for 16-year-olds, mm-hmm. you know, who make and generate this kind of imagery the same way we would for, you know, adults who are creating and generating this kind of imagery. Like some states have really... Some states have really tried to sort out legal pathways that are, you know, bluntly more developmentally appropriate, but not all states have. And so you should know, a family should know, you know, what's at stake here Wow! if they, you know, start to seek help. Because they might also want to seek help through the police, right? I mean, that there's there's another element of this, which is if kids continue to pass this around and the laws in your state say you cannot keep and or distribute Mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, the family might have a legal leg to stand on in terms of coming down on or saying something to the kids who are passing it around. But they also need to be aware their kid created the content Mm -hmm. and shared it first. Mm -hmm. And so they will need a very good lawyer to help them think through what makes sense in terms of trying to pursue any legal support because, you know, and they may say, we'll pay the fine, we'll do whatever for what our kid did, you know, but again, depends on what your state does around things like this, you know, in the name of trying to shut down other kids, you know, distribution of this. But this is messy, messy. And um, I would want the adults involved to have a very good handle on what the potential legal ramifications are wow. of seeking help, either the school level or the state level. Wow. I was not expecting you to say that. We're going to pause on that note, take a quick break. When we come back, I want to ask you about how this student can recover from all of this. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Ask Lisa podcast. Welcome back to the Ask Lisa podcast, The Psychology of Parenting. We're talking about a letter we got from a parent whose daughter had shared a naked selfie and her boyfriend then shared it with a bunch of his friends. And Lisa, I guess I want to ask you, how does she recover from this? How the mom's asking, how do we move past this? Well, we also don't exactly know what led up to her doing this. Um, And what we know, we've actually researched this often when girls send nudes, as they call them, Often they've been harassed to do it. Often they've been given a really hard time to do it. Mm. Often they've been threatened to do it. You know, it's interesting. Like, everybody's like, why did she do that? And sometimes when we get the backstory, it's pretty rough. And um, and one could certainly picture oneself as a, you know, 7th or 8th or ninth or 10th grader having a hard time managing that well. 
but it also may very well be this was a boyfriend that he was like, no, 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 I won't show anyone. It's just for me. You know, that kind of thing happens. But what's interesting is, what was this boy thinking, I right, know. to share this? Often that was they're so not at this age, awful. right? That's no, the they may, it may have been just a dumb, impulsive thing, but right. it's also a very destructive, dumb, impulsive thing. Right. So one thing, and again, there's so many um, variables and so many weirdnesses at play in this that we just don't know. But one thing that might be a path to pursue is this girl to be like, yeah, I shouldn't have show, I shouldn't have taken it and sent it. But like, if people are going to be weird and difficult about this, why aren't they coming down on him? You know, to right. really um, be like, you know, turn your dogs on him, not me. Right? Everybody knows we were dating. Everybody knows that I had no he. I would never have sent that if I thought he was going to share it. Like, why don't you guys go give him a hard time? You know, and what is pretty good about teenagers these days, they're like, yeah, you're right. You know, like they will. um, They are very empowered these days to um, stand up for what's right. And they're better feminists than they've ever been. (laughs) And so one recourse she may have is to be like, yeah, okay, fine. I shouldn't have done that. But like, why don't you guys bring down on him what you're bringing down on me because you all know that what he did was completely out of line. Wow. It's so interesting. Um, Speaking of empowerment, how do you help her just see herself in a good and normal light again and, and pick up the pieces? Like what helps in moving on? I think doing other stuff, focusing on Mm. other things, you know, it's interesting, Rena. It can be very, very helpful to focus on a problem, talk about a problem. You know, that can sometimes bring tremendous relief. And sometimes it just makes it worse. You know, the more you talk about it, the more you look at it, especially when it can't be solved. I think there's a delicate balance of making room to discuss it, making room to discuss, you know, how embarrassing and awkward and painful it might be. And then saying, okay, it's a thing that happened. You are a whole person show me what you're doing at school. Let's go work on your, you know, let's let's find a job that you like. You know, let's do all sorts of things. You know, really building out the fullness of who this young woman is and not having this be some event that just blocks out everything else that is true about her. Because this is a, you know, she's a person. She's Mm -hmm. a complex, interesting person. And so pushing in that direction, helping her move in that direction, and then maybe having some coaching around some language, you know, if someone brings it up or says something to be like, you know what, I shouldn't have sent it. And you all know he should not have shared it. You mm-hmm. know, just being really ready to mm-hmm. um, redirect the conversation and stand up for herself. Mm. Do you think she recovers from this? Yeah, I think she can. I think she can. Um, you know, there's a lot of forces we don't know about. But if it were more rare... I think I'd feel less optimistic, but honestly, mm. Rena, I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of photos like this floating around. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't great. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I don't think we don't really get it as adults. I think I think we don't really appreciate um the frequency with which these kinds of things occur. And of course if it's you and your kid, it feels like the end of the world, but I think in a given community, this is not an altogether rare event. Hmm. That's that's interesting. And I can see that. I can see that exactly. How do you think something like this can be prevented? Mm, okay, well, don't give kids phones. <laughs> <But> that's, <laughs> that's not really an option. Um, I think you talk about it, talk about it. And you have a game plan and you talk kids through a game plan. And I have to tell you, boys get asked for these. Boys send these. Um, there are a lot of, as they say, dick pics floating around. Mm-hmm. Um, somehow, you know, in the great double standard that completely persists, this is not seen as damaging. Um, and yet it, you know, they're they're not unusual. Um, so I think the first conversation you want to have with your kid of all, any gender is to say, what are you going to do if somebody asks you, you know, for a nude? And, um... And just have a plan. And kids will come up with a variety of things. They'll say, I'll just block that person forever. I'll just say no. Mm. Um, My favorite thing is um, 
teenage girl who, you know, somebody asked her, she's like, oh, do you like dirty pictures? And the person was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, I'll send you dirty pictures. And then she like sent pictures of like mud and dirt. (laughs) 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 You know, know, so stuff like that, which I'm like, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, But I do, I want to go back to that point about kids get harassed for these. You know, we, we don't really understand how rough it can be. Right. And so it gets to this second thing that we need to say to kids, which is never ask, like ever. You are never, ever, ever to ask for a nude. And, Rena, this is the thing that kind of blows me away. We've been on top of it saying to kids, don't send nudes, don't send nudes. We have not actually been, as adults, good at saying it is completely out of bounds for you to make the request. Mm, and so true. In my, it's so true. Oh, my it's gosh. It's so true, right? Like, if you can't send them, you can't ask for them. And it does happen that kids, like, out of nowhere send an unsolicited nude, but most of them are requested. Okay. And so can you imagine, Rena, being, like, a 10th grade girl with a crush on a 12th grade boy, and he's super popular and super cool, and he's like, send me a nude. Oh and you're gosh. like, no. You're right. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. It would be I get hard. It. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Totally get it. Yep. He, he should not be asking. He should not be asking. And nobody should be asking. That's interesting because I was thinking if I'm the mom of the boy, if I'm a boy mom, what should I, what's the conversation that I should be having with my, my son about this? Well, I do think it's the same conversation we should have with our daughters. But, it, ah. you know, it is the boys who are more likely to be asking when we look at the data. So I think you say to your son, you know, don't you ever, ever ask for a nude. And he says, yeah, but what if it's my girlfriend? <laughs> what if mm-hmm. we've been together forever? You say you are putting somebody in a horrible position to ask them to hand over to you nude photos that then are out of their control. And if you care about that person, you would never put them in that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I totally get it that there are adults who have a happy sexting life. Okay, that's fine. Rock on. You're over 18. You do what you want to do. When we are talking about kids and long-term ramifications, I think we want to be really clear. Nobody who cares about you will ever ask for this. And nobody you care about, you should ever ask for something like this. If you care, you would never ask. So I think that's where we start. And then you say, he says, well, what if I get one, right? Like, what if you're one of the friends who's like, whoa, where did this come from? You say to him or her, whoever your kid is, you delete it immediately and you pretend Mm. like you never saw it. You have no idea what that thing is. You delete it, you delete it. I never thought of that to tell him to delete it if they get one. Wow. Immediately, immediately. Because actually... In some states, if someone sends you one and you don't delete it, you're on the hook. What? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, again, like you've held on to child pornography in some states. And so delete it immediately. um, And you don't have to say to him, then you have to tell me, right? He may not want to tell you. But basically say you can never ask. And if anything arrives, you know, unsolicited, delete it. Didn't happen. Do you think there's more things that schools could be doing? Actually, I do. (laughs) I'm glad really? you asked. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So in my ideal world, I would have schools make a rule against requesting. Um, because a lot of schools have on the books rules against sending or sharing mm-hmm. nude photos. Um, a lot of them have them under their um, proper use policy, appropriate use policies for internet behavior, online behavior. They'll have things like do not, you know, share or send photos that are, you know, racy. But a lot of them do not have the do not request these photos. And um, and this is something I actually wrote a column about in the Times a while back, that, mm. wait, if we're going to penalize kids for asking, we should equally penalize them for requesting. Like, they sh- these should be on wow. equal footing at least. And here's why I think it really matters for schools to make this policy is that if schools make this policy, which is you are not to ask, like it is completely over the line to ask for a nude, then the kid who gets asked has a recourse. So say there's a 12th grade boy who's, you know, saying to a 10th grade girl, come on, send me a nude, send me a nude, or maybe younger or whatever. And the girl doesn't want to do it. She can say, and I'm just making up grade levels, this could happen at any grade level. If you ask me again, I'm going to tell the school. Oh, wow. Right? And then she could go to the school and be like, "Uh, do you see this exchange with this kid? 
And so it basically, it's like cutting it off at the pass, you know, not leaving it to the kid who's being asked to have all the fortitude needed to deal with the request. Like, we shouldn't be asking this of kids. If we know it's wrong to send them, it is wrong to request them. If we make policies and rules with some teeth and let kids know that they're there for them, we could help kids out quite a bit here in ways that we just have not thought to do. Mm. Wow. Gosh, there's so much I hadn't thought of here um, that you bring up. I also want to ask you about this mom, you know, who's also experiencing this. And she says it's a small town. What advice do you have for her as she's processing and, and probably having to face her friends in the community? Yeah, I mean, I think she may be mad at her kid, which I get. And you know, to the degree that she is, I hope she can vent it elsewhere and not at her kid because mm-hmm. um, her kid needs her support right now. Um, and getting mad at her kid at this point isn't going to make things happen different. You know, it's not going to change what happened. Um, but I also, I guess I would say, you know, rather than being on her heel about this, on her back foot about this, you know, if somebody brings it up, I think she should say, you know what, my kid shouldn't, should not have sent it. And believe me, You and I both know she never would have sent it if he thought he was going to do what he did. And what he did was out of line. What my kid did was out of line, but what he did was out of line, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I would would encourage the parent to, you know, redirect some of the ire away from her child or some of the shame away from her child because what that boy did was wrong. And. You know, I, you can't really measure, well, who was more wrong. It doesn't really matter. But the nature of the problem changed very dramatically when he did what he did. Mm. You know, we've talked about this a lot with friends, about whether you should talk to another, the other parent. In this situation, do you advise the mom reach out to the boy's parents? It's a really good question. Um, I don't know, Rena. I don't know. I mean, especially because there's all this legal stuff that could be tied up in it. Right, um, right. What I can say is the mom should probably do whatever the daughter wants her to do. Mm. So if the daughter is like, actually, could you talk to his folks? I think that would help. Then I think that's a great idea. If the daughter's like, oh, my God, please do not call them. Calling them is not going to make the situation better. Wow. Or certainly mm. not for the daughter. You know, one thing I'm amazed at throughout the course of this podcast over over the seasons, you have said – Take cues from your kid, which is something as a parent I don't think I've really valued enough. It's a funny thing. I think adults generally don't. You know what I mean? I don't think this is you. I think so often in our conversations about really tricky stuff, we forget how much information our kids have, how many opinions they have, how many viewpoints they have. We we see them as more inert than they really are. And um, and I think you've got so many variables to work with. You've got so many hard decisions that if you can slow any process down and check in with your kid about where they are and what they want and what they think and what they know, you'll do a better job with whatever the situation is it just means it's a slower, more complex process, but it's a better process. Mm. Wow. So, Lisa, on this note, wow, um, what do you have for us for Parenting to Go? Well, Rena, <laughs> <laughs> this is another wonderful time for me to bring up my favorite rule about technology. It should not be in kids' bedrooms. Uh-huh. And this is a good example of why, actually that um, maybe this nude photo was taken in the living room. Who knows? But in all likelihood, you know, it's when kids are behind closed doors that they do dumb things and dumb impulsive things. And so this is another great example of why it's really, really helpful to keep technology out of kids' rooms. And some kids need to do their homework in their room, no question. Um, But when that homework's done, the, home, the technology should come out of the room. It should not be there overnight. Um, the more the technology exists in the public spaces of family life, the less likely it is that kids are going to do something um, impulsive and destructive. Wow. Another reason I never thought of about keeping technology out of the bedroom. Makes yep. great sense. 
So thank you, Lisa. And I, it's a lot. It's a lot to process. It's, it's a lot to of, take in. I know. I, I know, Raina. I feel like you hit me over the head with a lot of stuff I didn't expect or see coming. But this is great. Um, grateful. And we'll put that column of mine in the show notes because one of the things that was really nice when it came out is I know that several schools changed their policies to um, give kids better protection. So if any listeners want to encourage their schools to use the summer to update their handbooks, I would be very happy to help in that department. Mm -hmm. Great call to action. Very important. So I'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Ask Lisa podcast so you get the episodes just as soon as they drop. And send us your questions to asklisa at drlisademore.com. And now a word from our lawyers. The advice provided on this podcast does not constitute or serve as a substitute for professional psychological treatment, therapy, or other types of professional advice or intervention. If you have concerns about your child's well-being, consult a physician or mental health professional. If you're looking for additional resources, check out Lisa's website at drlisademore.com. We'll see you next week.